Listen, in this desolate life, there's not many things I'm passionate about. We got video games, anime, culture, which are kind of the basis for what I talk about on this channel. What people don't know is that I'm just as passionate, if not more, about hockey. However, I haven't really had a chance to talk much about hockey. The NHL games are pretty much the same thing every fucking year, and to my knowledge, there hasn't been any hockey anime created. Huh. Okay then. Well, let's see what this is all about. Kira kira. Say it again, say it to my fucking face. Sports and sports anime are actually really popular in Japan. Series like Haikyuu, Slam Dunk, Captain Tsubasa, Kuroku no Basket, Hajime no Ippo, and plenty of others have garnered immense popularity and have helped bring new sports to Japan or popularize existing ones. Hell, we even got badminton anime, so why is it taking this long to get one for hockey? Well, the sport's just not that popular in Asia, especially Japan, and that's due to one specific reason. Cost. Hockey is considered an affluent sport and is actually the most expensive youth sport to play. For one, the cost of equipment is fucking insane. These numbers I'm going to read are from my hockey gear that I got in high school 10 years ago. $1,200 for leg pads, $400 for a glove, $400 for a blocker, $350 for a helmet, $650 for skates, $150 for pants, $150 for a chest protector, $200 for a stick, and probably another $100 for other miscellaneous protection items. That's $3,600 just for gear alone, and that was 10 years ago. Granted, as a goalie, it's going to be a bit more expensive, but nowadays you'll see sticks go for over $300 and skates that are well over $1,000. It's much more cost-effective for your parents to say, here, have ball, learn kickball. But the crazy thing is, gear is not even the most expensive thing about hockey. As you should know, hockey is played at an ice rink. Ice doesn't just naturally exist at all times of the year, so the upkeep for a rink is crazy. There's tons of money spent in maintenance and making sure that it stays at the optimal temperature. So in addition to your gear, you'll have to pay a fee each season to help cover the cost of the rink. Mine in high school was like six to 7,000 per season, but that number can go well into the 10,000s. And then there's also travel costs for tournaments and any other camps you participate in. Just in high school alone, my parents probably spent 30 to 50K on hockey for me, and how do I repay them? By becoming a shitty YouTuber. You're welcome. Disappoint! These barriers to entry have definitely stunted the growth and overall popularity of the sport worldwide, which fucking sucks because I think it's one of the best sports to both play and watch. So whenever I see another country try to embrace and shed light on the sport, I'm all for it. With this anime, I'm just hoping they're able to depict the sport in an entertaining way without too many glaring issues and, to my surprise, yeah, this show's a fucking mess. I don't usually like to be a negative Nancy in my videos, but there is just so many things wrong in this show. First off, this is not a sports anime. It's a slice of life where the characters play hockey. That's fine to use a more popular genre to help with showing off the sport, if it wasn't so fucking boring. The show follows a group of late middle school to early high school girls whose names don't matter because they're exactly the same. Honestly, you could have had the show be about one person and it would have the same amount of depth. Personalities felt pretty much the same. I mean, you do have Depression Girl, which is kind of cool. Not, not the depression part, but the fact that she isn't always bubbly and outgoing like the rest of the cast. When they're not practicing hockey, we can find them leading the embroidery club, eating lunch at school, buying ice cream, or taking a summer job at a hotel. Uh, perhaps it's my lack of experience as a middle school girl, but it was incredibly difficult to make it through most episodes. And that's partially because the show is literally friendship the anime. Normally in a slice of life, the strength is the characters. A lot of time and care is spent creating them into interesting and unique members of the cast and developing them as the show progresses. In Pride of Horns, it's just, hey, we're friends. That's Bog. Let's go do things because we're friends. Feeling down? Don't be, because we're friends. That volcano that is going to erupt in the distance, potentially killing everyone in town? Pfft, I'd like to see that lava get through our friendship. Their team motto is even, the bond of our hearts connects the puck. Disgusting. Honestly, if this show was just marketed as a slice of life and had no elements of hockey in it, I probably wouldn't have made it through the first episode. Plenty of other shows have this power of friendship theme. I mean, look at practically every shonen, but at least in those shows, the characters face adversity and grow throughout. Here, it seems they're only created with the function of being friends and solving everything with friendship. After watching the show back a second time, I still couldn't find a single scene that I enjoyed outside of the rink. That is a pretty big problem, because as I said, it's more slice of life than sports, so if the main focus can't keep people entertained, they won't bother staying around for the rest. But maybe the rest can make up for it. The hockey is good, right? Right?
This was a mistake! Unfortunately, the problems continue with the hockey. But who am I to judge? Just a fucking idiot on the internet, right? I'll admit, I am probably qualified to talk about two things in life, and hockey is one of them. I've played for almost 20 years and have a pretty in-depth knowledge of the game and rules. Look at this save I made when I was 15. You can trust me. I could spend hours and hours talking about every aspect of the game in this show, but no one's gonna care about me discussing the types of chairs in the rink lobby. But if you do, you can head over to my Patreon where I'm gonna do an in-depth look at all the hockey moments. I'm gonna do my best to do this in an organized way, but I apologize if it's all over the place. First off, as soon as you start episode one, we're in the middle of a game of Japan versus Canada that's tied 4-4 with less than a minute left. The likeliness of this ever happening is 0%, but because it's an anime, I'll let that slide. So yada yada, a few plays happen, Japan scores and wins the game. Seeing how the rest of the anime is the girls learning how to play hockey, this seems to be a pretty big fucking spoiler. I'd be like starting off high cue with them immediately beating Shira Torizawa just makes no sense. And then there's that idol song and dance, but you know, we'll get to that later. The real hockey begins with a training camp being put on by Nico's team, the Dream Monkeys. Wait a minute, it's a monkey. Huh? I am glad they mentioned that all the girls knew how to skate because that is not something you learn in just one episode. The coach who runs the training camp clearly wants to grow the game of hockey, you know, which I respect, but the way she plans to do it is combining hockey with entertainment. There's a hockey game and then a victory dance after. That's her expert plan for packing an arena. You know, it's not unheard of for a team to do something after a game for the fans. I mean, just look at Carolina Hurricanes and their storm surge, but no shot we'd see a song and dance. However, I do know how big the idol culture is in Japan, so this could be a reasonable method to garner interest. Now the hockey itself. I think it's good to have the story have mostly people who are completely unaware of hockey or its rules. That way people who are watching who are also unfamiliar learn along the way. That is, if you actually explain things correctly. I'll be the first to admit, hockey's got a lot of fucking rules, so good thing we're going to an instructional camp where the host will surely teach us the rules of the game, right? I looked through the entire show, but the only rules that are taught from the coach were how long the games are, what positions there are, and that there is no contact in girls hockey. Which to be fair, I, I didn't even think they were gonna mention the last one. So how do the girls learn the game? They get a rule book. A fucking rule book. In my time playing hockey, I have never seen nor opened a rule book and know zero people who have read a rule book. If you're going to learn the game, the best way is to play it or watch it. This is usually with the help from knowledgeable coaches who explain as you practice. I get that Japan has a very heavy learning slash school culture, but you would never be required to just read how to play hockey. But potentially the writers wanted the kids to help explain the game as they learn to seem a bit more relatable to that demographic. That's fine except they do a shit job explaining. I'll just take this one scene since it has the most discussion of the rules of the game. We get six factoids blessed upon us. First is that kneeing is using your leg to obstruct a player. Yeah, that's pretty much it. A minor penalty is two minutes, good. Tripping is making the opponent fall over, false. Here are two clips, both players fall over. One is tripping, one is interference. Tripping involves using your stick on someone's skates to make them fall over or a skate on skate trip called a slew foot. Might seem like I'm being a little bit too descriptive, but that's because the rules are very descriptive. If only there was a character who was knowledgeable about the sport and whose job was to help the players learn. <sighs> okay, sorry, continuing. A five minute penalty is caused by a major penalty. Yes, but you're never even told what that means. But ending is when you jab people with the handle of the stick. Very true, but do you know what also it is? A major penalty. And finally, using your hand or stick to stop a player is holding. Eh, kinda. Usually if it's with the stick, it's considered hooking, but I'll say that one's mostly right. I don't mind them showing scenes like this of the girls trying to learn the game, but if you're going to explain them this vaguely, at least put up a diagram or something to help the user visualize. Also, the show seems to really like talking about penalties when there is literally two, yes, two in the entire show. One where this shit commits a felony and another that you don't even get to see what is called. All right, more talking. There's also a lot of equipment in hockey that you would probably have no idea what it does if you looked at it. Somehow we were dealing with a bunch of savants who know everything and how to get dressed. Like seriously, I saw people that still needed help tying their skates at 12. We're only ever told that you need a stick and puck to play the game. I mean, shoo boys, all I need is me is a piece of wood and some horse shit and we can have ourselves one of them hockey games. They, they actually used to do that. 
This might not seem like a big of a deal to a casual viewer, but as someone who's heard plenty of people not wanting to play hockey or being allowed to play hockey because it's too dangerous, it kind of upsets me. That equipment is meant to protect you. You end up spending all of that money so that you don't have to have the fear of getting hurt. I literally had the puck shot at me thousands and thousands of times and never once thought it was going to hurt, and that's because I trusted my equipment. Explaining in detail the uses of the equipment would be great for both new players and parents interested in the sport. This also segues into one of the things that I was most upset about the show. I'm not exactly sure why, but the anime treats the hockey team as if it were a pro team. Pro play isn't usually until you're much older, but even so, it's not even likely that they would have been a travel team. And if they were, the whole process isn't laid out correctly. Yes, you'll have tryouts for a team, but it's way more difficult than what is presented. In the show, all the girls have to do is show basic skill on the ice, pass a written test, and skate 100 laps. Everyone passes and makes the team. Friendship. In reality, the higher level of play you're at means the harder it's going to be to play. Tryouts will be more advanced and plenty of people will not make the team. I know that sounds a bit harsh, but that's just part of the game. But something kind of funny in regards to the team is that yes, while everyone does make it, there was a team previously there. If you're unfamiliar with hockey, there's, you know, about 20 or so people who make up a full team, and most of them will be playing in games because you're exerting a lot of energy out there, so being on the ice the whole time doesn't make any sense. Unless you're apparently in this show, because not only do these girls make it, they just seem to fucking take over the entire team. You see like one other person besides them playing, so there's not even the chance of any competition to be had. Seeing a player struggle and then work their ass off to come back and make the team would have been awesome for the story and character development. This type of development and work ethic from the players is one of the things that makes Q such an enjoyable show to watch. Unfortunately, in Pride of Orange, if we see a player struggle, the power of friendship prevails and the problem is solved only minutes later. Now, we circle back to the equipment. Like I said, the show treats this like a pro team, so everyone gets their gear for free. That's honestly what made me the most upset. Not once was the cost to play ever mentioned in the show. The kids never have to buy equipment, pay for ice, any of it. I know I might sound like an idiot, idiot wanting them to display one of the negative sides of the sport, but I think it's super important. Yeah, I wish the sport was more affordable and accessible to the mainstream, but it just fucking isn't. It sucks, but I still think it's information we need to communicate to the watcher. At my highest level of play, the only things that were given were matching helmets, pant shells, and gloves, and those were probably still paid for in our season fees. So I got no idea how Mr. Pro Shop owners even did business giving out that much equipment every season. This is the face of a man who's clearly struggling on the inside. Now I'd like to get into the actual playing of hockey and how it's presented. There's a decent amount of practice footage, more so than games actually, but we don't see much. 90% of it is just them skating in circles around the rink, which, you know, don't get me wrong, it's good to condition your skating, but there's a lot more that goes on in a practice. A typical practice for me was stretching for the first 10-ish minutes, doing about 15 minutes of goalie warm-ups, then integrating drills with the rest of the team. That would be the bulk of the practice lasting anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, then we would finish off with either a scrimmage or conditioning skating. This team goes from completely inexperienced to winning a championship and we only get to see like three drills throughout the entire show. You really can't tell much of what they did to get better because it's never shown. Then there's the actual game footage, or should I say, lack thereof. The entire show has about 30 minutes of game footage, 15 of it being in the final episode. That's why I said earlier that this doesn't feel like a sports anime. I know I bring up Haikyuu a lot, the show's just one of my favorites, but they have an entire season, 10 episodes dedicated to just one match. Stuff like this allows the user to become fully invested, following the match from start to finish. You can build that tension up until the final moment, and when it happens, it's so satisfying to watch. Pride of Orange's games just start and finish before you know it. Sort of like me. As stated earlier, a traditional hockey game is 60 minutes, but the average game time here is somewhere near 4 to 5. There's tons of jump cuts and time skips where you have no idea what is actually happening. Even I had trouble following the games most of the time. Here's just an example that they blatantly show you. Final episode, four and a half minutes left in the game. Show about 10 to 15 seconds of in-game footage. Look at the clock again, 25 seconds. Over the course of the show, there was never an icing, offsides, high stick, hand pass, or puck being shot out of play called, which are very common. There was only like two or three instances of a goalie making a save and actually covering the puck for a face-off and only two penalties. We only get to see passes, goals, and an occasional save or turnover. Cutting out over 90% of the game leads to rushed scenes and hype moments with no impact. You pair this with pretty subpar animation and it makes the whole hockey experience pretty unenjoyable. And speaking of the animation, yeah, you already know where this is going. There's a ton of stuff I can break down, but we'd be going into hours and hours of content. So again, if you are interested, I'll be doing breakdowns on the Patreon. The way the players are animated is just off. 
The animation in the show itself is actually pretty decent, but they seem very stiff on the ice. There's not a lot of knee bending or active arms while skating, making it look a bit robotic. Also, skates have sharp ass blades that dig into the ice, which is how you accelerate, stop, etc. But in this show, it just looks like they're floating atop the ice. The puck is like half CGI, half not, and just looks awkward sliding across the ice. One of the first shots we see is from the coach at the camp, and she basically just breaks her wrist and was still able to fucking snipe it. Goalie, a very movement oriented position, has virtually none, just standing still in the net to save the puck or get scored on. Almost every time their glove is just facing straight down, just not an ideal position if you want to catch a puck. Hey, what happened? And the animations for the saves are fucking wonk. Like, what is this maneuver for catching? She practically just puts the puck in her own net. And now we got the hunchback of Notre Dame in there. The animation in the final game is passable, I'd say, but again falls victim to jump cuts and time skips. I have no idea why they chose the shots they did. If you watch a hockey game, it's pretty zoomed out so that you can see what most people on the ice are doing because there's a lot of important movement besides the person with the puck. The puck is small too, so showing the whole zone allows you to follow it easier. Here we focus a majority on the person who just has the puck. Within five seconds, it could cut from them skating to their face to their skates and then passing to someone where we have no idea where they're at and then just repeating the process over again. It's almost physically impossible to follow what's happening. A lot of these cuts probably were to do with budget. You can see that everyone is using a bubble helmet instead of the more popular traditional cage. This allows animators to use glare to not have to animate the face of each player on the ice, which would be pretty time consuming with the normal cage. If they did all have a cage, we'd probably get players looking like this poor goalie over here who lost all of her facial features. However, this does allow for more detailed shots of the face on close-ups, and there's actually pretty decent use of lighting on the helmets. Despite some of the decent shots, we are eventually just met with a slideshow celebration for the biggest moment in the entire show, and it kills any vibe that there was there presently. The biggest crime, though, and one that I cannot forgive, is the fact that we only get one Zamboni shot. Like, come on, dude, Zambonis are fucking sick. Give me an anime about a Zamboni. Bony driver, and I'd watch the shit out of that. There is a reason for these oversights and overall meh animation. Experience. I'm a virgin. Keep in mind that hockey is virtually unheard of in Japan, with only 16,407 people registered. That is 0.0001% of the population. Expecting animators who probably have never seen a hockey game or have any other anime source material to work off of to create something great is nearly impossible. You can tell the creators understood the game to an extent, but there was very limited attention to detail. So with that in mind, I would be willing to look over a lot of the mistakes if it wasn't just a promotional piece for a game. I have some issues with mixed media projects because it always seems like the agenda is focused on that media rather than the anime used to promote it. It makes me wonder if the creators really want to grow the game of hockey or are just trying to create some buzz to sell their game. That could be a topic for a different video, but for now, I will give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, you've heard me complain for 15 or so minutes. Now I'd like to actually talk about the things I liked. The opening is the best part of the show. Not because the song's amazing, it's pretty good, but because of these 10 seconds of anime. This sequence right here makes me so excited, yet so mad at the same time. It's absolutely fucking filthy. The movement looks super crisp and it's fast paced. It's what hockey actually looks like. I've watched it over a hundred times and it makes me happy every single time. So you must know it pains me that we don't get anything close to this in the actual show. We can see right here that the ability to animate hockey is there, but unfortunately we didn't get it. But damn, whoever animated that needs to be in charge if they ever do another hockey show. Bravo. They also managed to get a lot of random details right. The design of the rink is super realistic. They even got the stupid rubber floor that you see in almost every one. Only difference is that there would be a lot more people and other teams practicing and playing at that same rink. They got the dangler on the goalie mask and even differentiated goalie skates from player skates. Because if you don't know, goalie skates have a pick at the toe that allows you to push off and a layer of thick plastic around the bottom for some added protection. But my favorite scene in the whole show was the pro shop. It is by far the most accurate thing we see. The layout, how all the gear is hanging on the wall, the display for the skates, the messy stick rack, the wall for tape, blades, sweatshirts, a skate baking machine, and even the quote from good old Badger Bob Johnson. It's all perfect. There's even actual hockey fucking logos. Warrior, CCM, those are real hockey brands. We even got a little sneaky Red Wings logo. Okay, you know, I, I take back all the negative things I said. If this attention to detail was kept throughout, we could have had something special. And lastly, the idle part was actually pretty fucking solid. Granted, the dancing and whatever is a bit corny, but the songs, especially the one where they're in black, are pretty damn catchy. <laughs> 
So did Pride of Orange successfully help grow the game of hockey? I don't know. To me personally, I was underwhelmed and disappointed that they just tried to push the slice of life and idle genre instead of focusing more on accurate game animation. But regardless of what I think, I'm just glad that there are other people talking about hockey. I love the sport and just want to see it grow. So if you watched the show and loved it, that's awesome. I do highly recommend you try watching a real game to get the true experience. If you have any questions about the sport, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer. Also, tell me what your favorite sport anime is. Mine, if you couldn't guess from the 50 references, is Haikyuu. It has some of the best character development in anime, period, and not just for Karasuno, but for most of the teams they end up playing. That's all I have for you this time. Hope to see you here again.